Hi everyone, my name is Mike Wynn and I'm the creator of Plight to Freedom, a website dedicated to wilderness education and self-reliance. And currently I'm working on a project that some of you may be interested in, where I focus on plant identification and use. And I go into details on how to identify a plant, things to be cautious about, its edible parts, medicinal properties, and other ways the plant has been used. Here's a few examples as to what I cover. In springtime, beauties will offer you a potato-like corm and edible leaves that you can use in many dishes. However, if you like a plant with kick, toothworts will give you that horseradish or wasabi-like flavor. Are you short in ginger? Look outdoors. Wild ginger could be used like its Asian counterpart, but more is needed to compensate for the lack of flavor. In summer, Queen Anne's lace is abundant in fields, and it has a tough, woody edible root. But don't mistake that for other members of the parsley family, such as poison hemlock, which killed Socrates. Also watch out for wild parsnip. Although the root is edible, if the plant is touched while you are sweating, you could get a rash that lasts for months. Are you looking for a natural treatment to soothe that rash? Jewelweed or touch me not is your plant. Just rub the crushed leaves and stem directly on your skin, or make an infusion to bathe the affected areas. Have you been burnt, bruised, or stung? Common plantain is as common as the sun. Just crush the leaves and apply them directly to the place that hurts. Are you feeling a little dehydrated? The Kiowa Indians used wood sorrel before Gatorade was invented, and it's a treat that children love. Interested in a vitamin boost during your winter hike? Common chickweed could be found year-round and has been known to bloom even while being covered by the snow. And finally, are you interested in building a primitive hut? Then look around a pond or a ditch for bulrush. Not only can you eat it much like you would a cattail, but it has historically been used to weave mats together for bedding and in the construction and insulation of homes. To tie the rushes all together, look for nettles or Indian hemp, which both make a great and strong cordage. Well, I hope you found that information to be useful. And if you have, please join me at Plate to Freedom for more information on each of these plants. Hope to see you all on the trail.